live in a world of chemicals. Our bodies produce and use chemicals. Plants and trees produce them. Even water is a chemical compound. Other chemicals in our world are man-made synthetic compounds. Although we don't know exactly how many man-made chemicals are in use today, experts generally agree it could be more than 100,000. Gasoline, paints, household cleaners, detergents, toiletries, wipes, solvents, everyday products used at home or work are made of chemicals. Before using any chemical product, you should find out all you can about it, and this information is literally at your fingertips in free publications called Safety Data Sheets, or SDSs. OSHA's Hazard Communication Standard requires chemical manufacturers, distributors, or importers to provide safety data sheets, formerly known as Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDSs, to communicate the hazards of chemical products. All safety data sheets are required to follow a specific format and provide detailed information in 16 different sections. To protect yourself, your co-workers, and your family members, here are the top 10 things you should look for on a product safety data sheet. What is the emergency phone number? If someone is injured, hurt, falls ill, or poisoned by a chemical product, who would we call to get more information? You can be sure emergency medical personnel, especially physicians and nurses, will want to see the safety data sheet. The manufacturer or distributor's name, address, and phone number is required to be right up front in Section 1, along with 24-7 emergency phone numbers. What is this product recommended for, and are there any restrictions on its use? This information is also required to be included in Section 1. How dangerous is this product? Statements like causes irreversible eye damage, highly flammable, and can cause central nervous system damage appear on safety data sheets even for seemingly harmless everyday household products. Section 2 is called hazards identification and it is required to include all hazards regarding the chemical. What do you do if the product gets in your eyes, on your skin? What if you inhale or swallow some? Section 4, First Aid Measures, lists the signs and symptoms of exposure to the chemicals and whether the effects are usually immediate or delayed and the appropriate first aid measures to take. If the product is accidentally spilled or otherwise released from its container, how do we clean it up? What materials can we use? And how do we dispose of everything properly? Should we wear masks or gloves, eye protection? All this should be listed under Section 6, Accidental Release Measures. Are there any specific cautions we should be aware of to make sure we are safely handling and storing the containers of this product? Is it dangerous to store in certain places or near other chemicals or products? Does it have to be in a temperature-controlled environment? Section 7, Handling and Storage, provides this information. When using this product, what personal protective equipment should we be using? Should we use special gloves, splash goggles, or protective clothing? What should we do to prevent exposure to any hazardous chemicals in the product? Will we need to provide extra ventilation? Section 8, Exposure Controls Personal Protection, tells us what we need to do to engineer a safe environment when using the chemical. What does the product look like? What color is it? Does it have a distinctive odor? Are the vapors heavier or lighter than air? At what temperature will it ignite? Is it an acid or alkali? Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties, lists the chemical characteristics we should know. What other materials should never be mixed with this product? Can it become unstable if exposed to heat, light, or anything else? Could this product react with other materials like metals, causing it to decompose into a dangerous hazardous chemical? Some chemicals, when combined with certain others, can cause an explosion or fire. Section 10, Stability and Reactivity, outlines these cautions along with any known hazardous reactions. One of the most important sections of the SDS is Section 11, Toxicological Information. Could repeated exposures to this product cause allergic reactions? Are there any short or long-term health effects to exposure? Is this product associated with birth defects? Can exposure cause genetic mutations? Can it affect reproductive organs or the development of a fetus? By what routes can this chemical enter our bodies? And is anything in this product known to promote or cause cancers? Section 11 outlines this important information. When working with chemicals, we can never have enough information. Get the safety data sheets and read them thoroughly. 
protect yourself, your co-workers, and your family.